Hi, this is Larry Jordan. This is an excerpt of a power-up webinar entitled Apps and Plugins for Final Cut Pro 10. By the way, we have a new subscription membership service. All of our online video training, tutorials, and webinars are now available via subscription. This includes all of our Final Cut Pro 10 training and our Adobe training. For one low monthly fee, you get streaming access anywhere, anytime via the Internet. Plus, subscribers can attend any live webinar for free. This is a fast and low-cost way to access all of our online training. To learn more, visit LarryJordan.biz slash subscriptions. Tonalizer, which is manufactured by Iridis, which is Iridis.com, is a $179 package that's used for subtle tone changes to images. If you've got an image which is orange or blue, Iridis is not going to fix it. It's designed to be a subtle image enhancer. One of the things I really like about Tonalizer, it's got a built-in broadcast safe filter and a split-screen comparison, though the split-screen is not as nice as the one that we just looked at inside Yanobox. Let me show you how Tonalizer works. Here we've got our house on the hill again. I'm going to hide this so we can see the controls a bit more easily. I go up to Iridis, and we have two settings, Tonalizer VFX and one that's CineStyle. There are some cameras that shoot with a color lookup table that's called CineStyle. And if that's the camera you're using, you'd want to use Tonalizer, which is optimized for the CineStyle format. For everybody else, which means most of us, grab the Tonalizer VFX, drop it on top of the clip. The default setting doesn't make any changes to your clip, so I'm going to select the clip and go over to Tonalizer. And I want to go down to the bottom first. Notice down here it has a built-in safe range, which means it has a broadcast safe filter built into the filter. The reason I like this is the broadcast safe filter that ships with Final Cut 10 is useless because the broadcast safe filter is applied before the color corrector filter, which means that I've got broadcast safe clamping my whites and clamping my super blacks, and then the output of that goes into the color corrector where I make changes and screw up the whites and screw up the blacks. I've been talking to Apple that they have to figure out a way to put the broadcast safe filter after the color corrector filter. Whether they decide to do that or not is up to them. But the fact that here all of this is integrated into one unit means that you're going to make adjustments and your white levels are going to stay safe and your black levels are going to stay safe. We also have the ability to show clipping in case I bring the white levels up too high. This is a good example here if I grab this and drag it down and turn on show clipping. The blue indicates chroma saturation that could be excessive and the red indicates luma or grayscale white settings that are too hot. This is a wonderful warning to have because you don't want to release a program that gets hit to broadcast and that gets bounced back because your white levels are too hot or your chroma saturations is too deep. So I've applied the Iridis filter and Watch what happens as I move adaption up. Look at how the picture's getting more interesting. We get, we're enhancing the shadows. I've got more interest up in the clouds. Just with that little adaption slider, a lot of things are happening at the same time to improve this. I want to increase shadow details. I can grab the shadow detail slider, and it increases the, the edge definitions of darker images or highlight rescue. If, if the clouds are blown out, I can start to pull some of that highlight detail back. I can warm up the image. Okay, there it's starting to show that my white levels are getting a little bit hot, or I can tint the image, lean it toward yellow, or lean it toward, looks like green, and lean it toward magenta. We can change chroma settings by decreasing the, the amount of saturation or increasing. But in general, what you're doing here is you are doing fine adjustments. You're not trying to fix a problem. You're trying to enhance a tone, enhance a mood. And we also have a split screen control in here where you're able to say, take a look at the before, which is above, and the after, which is below. Subtlety, tonal values, enhancing the feeling of an image, that's where Tonalizer really excels. For the complete version of this webinar, visit our store at larryjordan.biz slash store. On the left-hand side, click Power Up Webinars and look for webinar number 65. And thanks.